This podcast is sponsored by Crypto University. Yes, it's a whole university of cryptocurrency. Go to cryptouniversity.network and learn how to invest or trade in cryptocurrencies or NFTs and change your life. So use the link in the description of this video for benefits when you sign up. Welcome to Podcast with McNeoni. I'm so excited today because I have Gray Jabesi. Gray Jabesi is a name that you hear if you're going to search crypto in Africa. Uh, he has a name for himself. And because he's Malawian, I'm so privileged to have him around because this is going to be more for us talking about crypto, but also talking about Malawi and the challenges that we have at the moment and how maybe crypto would be a solution to some of those, but also looking into how young people who are struggling right now can find a solution to their lives by leveraging crypto. So welcome, Gray, to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, I'm really humbled to be here, humbled to be here because I've seen this podcast. It's really doing well. You have a, a nice setup there and... Um, not many people are doing podcasts at that level, you know? It's like where it's enjoyable yeah. to listen to and uh, kind of like yeah. you can see the death of media. But there's something weird about yeah. it that all the good podcasters have the Mac at the beginning of their name. So in South Africa, <laughs> Mac G is a friend of mine. And then in Mali, you also have Mac. I'm like, there's something about Macs and podcasts. For sure. <laughs> I don't know what is happening there, man. Uh, we're going to talk about Mac G later on. But yeah, I'm so excited to have you, man. Um, and yeah, you're rightly saying the truth that I think the mainstream media is suffering right now because of so many restrictions. There are so many elements of uh, political collectiveness that is being pushed. So every agenda that is coming through, that is being pushed by whosoever is pushing it, comes to the mainstream media and they can't offer anything that is undiluted. So I think uh, people are going towards podcasting because it is where they can find some raw thoughts. Mm -hmm. That is absolute truth, yeah. Yeah, but welcome, man. Uh, I'm so happy. So when I got contacted to you uh, with your peer, I was like, oh my God, man, Gray has a peer. Like, this is amazing, man. You're doing great, right? Actually, um, Ace is not my PA. My PA is based in Germany, but um, okay. uh, Ace is a, he's a really, you know, he's a great guy who has been killing it in content. So I yeah. brought him in to my team to sort of help, help him expand what he's doing because he's really good with like, you know, how he knows how social media works, uh, especially yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So I brought him yeah. into my team to sort of mentor him and help him to, to grow, you know? So he just proactively right. knows where, uh, what is the right thing to do, who I need to get in touch with. That's why he yeah. suggested that I could yeah. help you. No, 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 I'm so happy to connect with you, man. I, I already had you in my plans. So when you connected me, I told him that I already had Gray in my plans. I, I wasn't just sure how to connect to you because on TikTok, I wasn't sure which one was your real account. On Instagram, I wasn't sure which one was your real account. I was like, okay, fine. Uh, but one day, so yeah, I'm so happy to do this. But yeah, let's talk about your story because if you have watched my podcast, I'm all about the story. Yeah. Because for me, right, so uh, let's talk from the Malawi perspective. What happened, man, that you should leave Malawi? Um, man, it's it's just normal, you know. Um, if yeah. you were, Malawi just doesn't uh, provide opportunities to certain type of people and or yeah. in most places in Africa. Uh, it's, mm. it's so difficult for, it was just, I mean, Look, there was a, a mixture of things, right? I just couldn't see myself yeah. there because mm. I wasn't, I'm not really inclined into the education thing, go to college and all that. I wasn't really interested in that. Yeah. And it seemed like that was the only path that you could take to, uh, to become successful. And my parents yeah. also were in South Africa. So it was just logical that I had to, to go there. Okay. So, so yeah, the family is not Malawi. The whole family is in South Africa? No, they were in South Africa. Yeah, they were in South Africa at the time. Yeah. 
So okay. I just had to go there because I didn't really, I wanted to do more like tech stuff, you know, computers and yeah. all. And there's, there is currently still no industry for that kind of stuff. Right. You know, so I had yeah. to go elsewhere. Mm, yeah. Interesting. So, but they are back in Malawi right now. Yeah, exactly. No, cool. Because I had a rumor. I don't know if you out treat it. That Tamia is your sister. Yeah. She's my sister. No, ah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know how. Yes. That, I don't know how that's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I haven't seen it uh, properly, right? So it was something that I heard, right? Mm. So it wasn't necessarily um, like I heard. So I saw somewhere. So I treated this as a rumor until I got to hear it from either her or yourself. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, my sister. Yeah, cool. So you did school in Malawi somehow. You did all oh, these the MSCs and stuff, uh, or you didn't do school any, any, anymore. You just went to South Africa because I saw that you did a bit of a, um, uh, video editing and uh, special effects and st stuff of that nature. Yeah. So I, w I went to school, you know, until high school and, and then okay. from four and all that stuff. But I already yeah. had dropped out, even though I was going, I still wrote my, my exams, you know, uh, literally it was, it, yeah. you know, that was a difficult time for me because I, I, I was just so confused. I didn't understand what I was doing all these things for, like, why do yeah. I have to show up every day and work hard yeah. and study? So I was doing the bare minimum, just enough to get to the next class. Um, mm. and then after that, yeah, I just never really went to school anymore. I just started learning stuff on my own. Uh, I'm from area 25, man. So, um, we, 25! <laughs> you already know. so at the time we had like, uh, you know, we had people trying to break out and doing interesting new things that caught my interest. Mm. Uh, you know, mm. the, mu the music scene was kind of growing. And then mm. also, uh, the video, uh, production industry was just getting started. Um, yeah. You know, graphic design was also just getting, you know, being born. You know, uh, we had like mm -hmm. uh, an influ influential crew in Area 25 called Sungurunu Crew. I don't know if you know them. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, the Esim, right? Esim uh, yeah. is, a, is a cool guy. Exactly. Yeah. So Esim and Janta and Mago and all mm -hmm. these guys they were doing stuff that we were learning from. You know, you used to hang out mm -hmm. at their studio and then we got exposed mm -hmm. to all, all this stuff. And then from there, I just took it on my own hands and just started building from there. You did well, man. But also, I saw that you you did some computer science, right? And I was interested, uh, basically web web development. And I was interested because I'm also a web developer. So I was like, yeah. okay, was this something that really uh, inspired you to start looking at crypto? Because you were always online trying to look at the new trends. Well, you know, I think l learning how to code is just a basic skill that everybody should have in the in the world today. You know, if you're really trying to be relevant. <laughs> You should at least learn yeah. how computers work. So yeah. Yeah, I learned it out of necessity. I wanted to build my own website. And then from there, it just mm. started expanding uh, onto it. And then when I came across cryptocurrency, because I'm yeah. coming from a poor country that's completely broken, you know, it, it, it mm. made sense in the first glance that, oh, this is it. You know, and mm. then I just started taking it on from there. I started working online and earning in crypto. Mm. And eventually, you know, the the... the the uh, coins that I was earning at the time became, mm. you know, worth a lot of you money. Think. Yeah. So yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. So I think some somehow I feel like you uh you got lucky. <laughs> you yeah. got lucky. You got to do the space early when people were doubting a lot of what crypto is going to be, and then yeah, you made a killing out of it. Well, luck so doesn't me, well, luck doesn't exist, man. That's just not true mm. because. Mm. Um, you know, I had, so here's the thing, right? I was, uh, it's either I could have spent that money that I, I invested yeah. in something and then it grew just like someone else mm. would have at the yeah. time, someone else who was making the, the money that I was making, uh, some people yeah. would go back home and build houses, uh, or mm. they can spend it on alcohol or they can spend it on yeah. school fees to advance their education. I didn't do any of that. You know, I thought that it was right. Yeah. For me to invest in in cryptocurrencies i sold my car and everything put it all in into crypto even downgraded yeah. my 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 standard of living so that i can have a lot yeah. more bitcoin 
So it's risk, yeah. you know, it's not luck. It's just risk. And uh, yeah, 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 but but what made you to believe that this thing is going to be a, a thing, man? Because the way uh, I remember a friend of mine introduced me, introduced me to crypto around 2017, right? Mm. When uh, even I think uh, Bitcoin was not uh, as much as it is today. And that particular time I was being told, please invest in crypto. I was like, come on, man, I don't understand this whole thing. What made you believe it, man? Bro, if you understand, if, you know, you have to understand that I'm not coming from, I only went to traditional school for 12 years, right? Mm, so mm. I don't have strong conviction. I've never, I haven't been brainwashed so much about mm. how things work. So I still mm. have a good side of me that is open-minded enough to look at things and make my own judgment, right? Mm. Whereas, mm. you know, mm. otherwise most people who have, who are so educated, they it's difficult yeah. for them to look at new things and find age or to actually find them interesting because they are so convinced yeah. that how things work. Uh, but if you mm. really look into crypto and Bitcoin specifically and how it works, yeah, yeah, so you immediately understand it. You're like, oh, you know, wh why do you think mm. Malawi has all these fewer problems at the moment? It's all tied to money, <laughs> bad money. Yes. Right? So yeah. because I was coming from that background where people in South Africa. They're only four hours mm. away, or I mean, they're always only like two hours away from Malawi mm. to South Africa. They can't even send money from uh, mm. South Africa to Malawi immediately. It's a complicated process. Yeah. And then if also, if you are in Malawi right now and you try to work online, you literally have no means to get paid, right? Yeah. Because yeah. PayPal doesn't work there and the banks, they just don't have APIs. They don't work properly. So when all those things connect as an African person and you use Bitcoin, even once you understand why it's a big deal. So for me, it was that I was like, yes, my income went from $300 a month to 2000 in one mm. month because I was able to work online. Mm. Yeah. No, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. Because I, I think, uh, doubters, doubters like me, right? Mm. At that particular time, so how we missed uh, that opportunity of coming in early because we could have been rich like you because I've heard about, um, I was trying to look online to, to look at your net worth, right? But I heard that you're a millionaire. I don't know, is it a millionaire in Kwacha, millionaire in Rands, millionaire in uh, US dollar, or millionaire in crypto? Well, look, there's no such a thing as a millionaire in Kwacha or in, a millionaire in Rand. <laughs> it's just like, you know, yeah. even though my first million when I w moved to South Africa, I was aiming to make one million Kwacha, which is stupid now. But if I look back, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's crazy. One million is nothing right now here. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, I became a millionaire in US dollar when I was 24 years old. You know, that's what it means to be a millionaire. Wow. It's like, in, in US dollars, you know, which sounds like a big yeah. deal in the, you know, it depends on where you are and also what you're trying to achieve. Uh, I'm, I'm in Dubai mm -hmm. as I speak. I travel around, uh, you yeah. know, being a millionaire here, it's not even a thing. It's like, you're just one of the small boys, you know? So <laughs> it's all about perspective. <laughs> yeah. It's all about perspective because hey, sh come yeah. on, there are, there are rich people in Dubai, man. Like, hey, sh those oh, shirts bro, and stuff. You don't, you don't want those problems, right? And if, if, you, <laughs> if you want to really reap, if you want to become wealthy, you have to move to Dubai, I think, because mm. whether you are a millionaire, a single digit millionaire, you are nothing mm. here. You're a nobody. Nobody is going to look at mm. you twice. And you're going to yeah. get inspired to now grind for more, right? Where if you stay mm. in certain environments, you know, like what mm. our politicians do, they like to be the big fish in a small pond where they're only rich when they're inside the country, right? Yes. They fly when over they're to out Dubai, and nobody. nobody gives a shit, you know? So you, yeah. don't want, you don't want those problems. Yeah, that's true, man. Because I think I've seen that there's a trend of many startups, many people that are, are sharp in the head, they are going to Dubai uh, because of the, I think the, Dubai is more open, uh, creativity is happening. There are so many people meeting at one place. It's becoming a new thing. And when I heard that you're, you're, you're staying in Dubai, I was like, yeah, I think this is the right thing. I think every sharp minded is going that side. Oh yeah. I mean, you have to ask yourself this, like if you're in a country, if you're in Malawi or in South Africa mm -hmm. or elsewhere, you have to ask yourself, yeah. what does Malawi offer you really? Yeah. Right. Lord, <laughs> Lord shedding. <laughs> Lord shedding. Bad I'm, politics. I'm, 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 my life is crazy right now, man. I don't know, man. You, you're safe that side, man. 
Do you, yeah. do you know what Rochelle is that side? Well, I mean, I was, I was in South Africa last month and then I also, yeah. I was in Uganda just last week. So I know, yeah. you know, you know, so, <laughs> you know the deal, right? Uh, but the thing yeah. is, you know, Dubai, just like it offers you security. You don't have to worry mm. about uh, wearing a NAS watch or if you forgot mm. your, your, your cell phone on a table uh, in the restaurant, mm. the hotel, and somebody will pick it up. It's so safe. So all these rich people wow. are here because that's, this is the only place where that you can drive a Lambo and nobody's going to pay attention to you. Right. Because, because people have Lambos, right? <laughs> no, bro. People have like Rolls Royce, um, Bentleys mm. outside in this hotel that I'm staying in just downstairs. You just walk outside randomly. I can guarantee yeah. you that you're yeah. either going to see a Rolls Royce parked outside or some Bentleys out there. Right. So wow. it's, it's an extreme level of wealth. And I think it's good to be exposed yeah. to that and the network that also comes with that as well. So, you know, I think that's very true. But yeah. Because the net, the network that I would get in Malawi right now is a network of where well, we're going to be discussing the problems of power shortages, Forex and the like, well, the network that you would have at a, at a place like that is the conversation is different. The conversation is about uh, investments in big economies, maybe growing economies, but it's going to be a different perspective altogether because you're inspired already. You're not looking to be something that you already ha- you already are at that moment. Yeah, it's basically high level conversations because um, mm. you know it, there's a different when you're dealing with people who in Dubai it's so rare that I'm dealing with someone who is worried about his rent end of the month. You know, um, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you're dealing with those kind of people, like when you're dealing with yeah. someone who is worried about rent at the end of the month, you know how you deal. You know, they, they can yeah. sacrifice a million dollar deal that will take six months to close just so that they can mm. make five thousand to take care of your of their immediate situation. That's a thing. So that's here, a thing. it's like it's always high level thinking, long term. People are thinking three, five, ten, forty years. You know, mm. so yeah, mm. it's not, it's not people trying to make bread money here. That's what I love. Yeah. About. Really like, okay, we, we wanna, yeah. you want to get rich? Let's really do it for real. Right. So mm. that is the, the, the premise. That's true, man. If, 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 if you were here, uh, the kind of business we could be discussing is, uh, we need to sell men's, uh, <laughs> at some depot somewhere. <laughs> Well, look, and then you look at the money that uh, Agriculture is, is, is solid, you know. Uh, one of the richest people yeah, in Africa, yeah. uh, Dangote, he's really huge in that. Mm. It makes sense. Yeah. However, mm. you, you know, if I was in Malawi, it just means that I would have to do, I would have to now start pressing buttons with government officials who want to uh-huh. their power and, and they're trying to happen. Exactly. To extort you. And it, it's, you know, usually it's like people are more thinking about themselves all the time. They don't think about the bigger yeah. picture of growing the pie, you know? So it's yes. a different kind of mentality. Yes. So I just get frustrated with those kind of things. I'm like, man, I, wait, I ain't got time for that. Right. If you're in, com- yeah. if you, yeah. if you're a competent person in the world today, you mm. know, you can go anywhere. Mm. You're going to be accepted. You're going to have the resources. Mm. You're going to find investors. Yeah. So nobody mm. really has the time to fight stupid wars. That's why you see all the smart people, they leave their countries, they go elsewhere. That's the thing. That's the thing. Because here you have to fight people's egos. You have to fight yep. a system that is rigid to just open up, to allow you to do any innovation because they want you to be part of a, whatever scheme they want to do with that innovation and so forth. It's yeah. crazy here. Everything is personal. You know, It's all about... Yeah. Whoever is in Who's, the Europe is it's like you look, bro. If you work at a tax authority or you're the president mm-hmm. or the minister, you work for me. It's not the other way around. You know, it's a thing. you work for it's me. And especially if I have money, I definitely pay taxes. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm yeah. paying you. So there's no way where you should now be we should have be having an argument of me kissing your ass just because I want to get something yeah. that's just doesn't no. work. Doesn't doesn't work. I mean, let's talk about the crypto in a university uh, because um, I saw you in one podcast. We're talking about um, the valuation. I think is was it twenty million? I don't know if you still there. Twenty million US dollars in terms of the valuation of the crypto university, which is a big platform. I saw it. I saw the program that you're offering. Quite amazing. Tell me more about the university, man. So yeah, the university is uh, the crypto university is all about changing the standard of uh, of education. And what it should be yeah. like. I know what education should be like because I have gone through it myself. Um, yeah. So, you know, well, basically you have to think 
if you have to think about it in a modular sense possible, how do we solve, yeah. let's take Malawi as an example. How can we solve the education problem in Malawi? Well, mm. somebody will say that let's build more schools, but mm. that's absolutely wrong. You know, you're in mm. 2022, you're not supposed to build more blocks. You're supposed to just make the uh, internet connection absolutely cheaper, almost zero cost. Everybody gets mm. educated without even trying to force them into a classroom, right? So mm. Mm. another problem also is that um, I think it's wrong for anyone right now to spend four years in university with this, mm. the idea that eventually you're going to get a job. I don't agree with that. I think mm. uh, education should be in a format where you can access it whenever you want just to learn enough of what you need. Then you can move on with your life mm. and you should start earning within at least two months of learning stuff, you know, for most mm. things, for most people, right? It's different when say you're uh, a rocket scientist or an engineer or yeah. whatever. Right. Um, mm. so I built the crypto university as a platform where anyone in the world can learn about the future, which is cryptocurrency mm. and blockchain. Uh, whether mm. you have a job already, you can learn, enough skill for you to, uh, to get an upper hand in your, uh, in your, uh, employment. Uh, you can mm. work in one of the, some of the largest institutions in the world that are being born today because they're looking mm. for people to work, but they, nobody knows crypto. Right. Mm. And to also educate people on their, on themselves, to equip themselves with financial knowledge, especially cryptocurrency mm. knowledge, because it mm. is the best performing asset in the last 12 years. It will be still mm. in the next 10 or 20 years. So if you're not mm. learning about it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Where do you learn it? You're not going to go to, uh, to your typical university to learn crypto. You need crypto university. Mm. So that's how yeah. it was created. Man, this is huge, man. Uh, to have uh, a university, right? Uh, it's huge, right? Um, yeah, we have, we have, like, we have 40,000 students worldwide. It's big. It's a multi, it's a multi-million uh, dollar company and so on and so forth. So for sure. Wow. So it's var- it, now it's valued at a billion. It has gone, no, the value has gone up. No, no, no. It, we have 40, more than forty thousand students. Uh, the valuation now is maybe twenty million or so. Twenty, 20 million dollars. No, that's huge. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah that's huge. That's huge. I mean, we you, know you it's can, a, in revenue alone, it's a multi-million uh, dollar company as well. So, it's wow. A, but I've been building this for four years straight, so it's not like you know. Out of the uh, yeah, so it's not like you're gonna walk up today and create a platform and then get that kind of attraction. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I think some of these platforms work, work work with the person as well because I think the way you position yourself mm. um, helps you or helps the brand to also pick up because people see you living the crypto life and then they can believe that you can teach crypto. It's unlike a person who says, "Okay, fine, I'm gonna teach you." Let's say how to let's say mine for instance mm. but they don't live a mining life and then people completely doubt their credibility yeah you know there's two ways to look at that um there's yeah. one where can you learn from a professor who is broke and then they never made any money <laughs> and then they're teaching you about business they don't have any business themselves it's hard right for most people yeah. though it shouldn't yeah. be it shouldn't really be that way it, it should just be about the information so, I mean, yeah. I don't really live any extra, extravagant life or anything of sort. In fact, um, you know. I think most, you do. Uh, I, I think you do. No, you're if traveling. You, you're traveling. Uh, I've seen you with some twins. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, and so forth. You tr- you're living the life. Yeah, but look, that's just normal, you know, in my world. But if you look at people who actually try yeah. to live the big life in crypto, they they really live. Like, I'm working all the time, so I don't really have time for, like, all the other fun Yeah, mm. you know. But, you know, they, you, you should be able to learn definitely from people who can do what they're saying that they're doing. Uh, that's one. Yeah. You should also be able to, to learn from people who haven't even done what they're saying. Like, I learn maybe yeah. a lot from people who have failed to do something. Because then you know, you know, it's kind of like um, uh, inverse feedback, right? Which you can still use to to implement it in something. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the crypto, the crypto platform, uh, you you developed it because of your background in computer or you got some developers? At the beginning. um, At the beginning. At the beginning. I had to write the whole whole website myself and create Mm. the content myself. But eventually mm-hmm. now we have a team of maybe 25 people or so, you know, so it's big. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Worldwide, you know, in the US, Europe, Africa, yeah. you know, Dubai, everywhere. 
<laughs> Dude, you're doing the most, right? You're doing the most, man. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. I, I heard that you're recruiting in Malawi right now. Yeah. Um, I think my wife was telling me that, yeah, I, you're talking to Gray, right? Yeah, I saw that he's recruiting. And I was like, yeah, let me hear more. So what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to expand in different countries or you just want to give back to Malawi? Well, I'm already in like in multiple countries already, but, yeah. um, you know, I have a farm in Malawi. I have the exchange. And I want to expand with some other acti- uh, business activities that I want to do. And I need competent people to run that office uh, to, you mm-hmm. know, full time. So I need to find yeah. like, a really good, I already have a team there that runs my show, but um, I mm-hmm. still need like extra people to be able to, to help to scale it up, you know? Um, yeah. But we, we're, you know, we're just like a f- future focused company or in all my activities and we just find people who are aligned with that kind of thinking. We do everything on ourselves. We never take a loan from a bank or from anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still mm-hmm. fund and we survive because we're profitable in our businesses. We're not looking for any mm-hmm. favors. And yeah. I need people who have that kind of mentality to conquer, you know, uh, to be able to yeah. be part of the team. No, that's amazing, man. Uh, I mean, but it's, it's always good to, to build stuff home at, at least, right? It's, it's like, for me, as I said, in my in my in my question, it's more or less like you're giving back in in some way or the, in one way or the other. Because here, uh, I think it's it's a country where people look for employment. So if you provide it, you become a friend of the government in one way or the other. Well, that's actually incorrect. Well, it, it, you know, yeah. it's effective, but it's mm-hmm. it's it's wrong in a way that I don't owe Malawi anything, right? Um, just mm-hmm. like you also don't owe it anything. You know, you're a competent yeah. person who is productive. You contribute to the economy. Yeah. You actually pay taxes to it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you don't owe any country anywhere. And just because you're also born there, it doesn't mean that you have to um, to be part of every little element. Right. Mm. Again, you have to be where you um, you're getting value. Right. Yeah. So if, if it's working for you to be in Malawi, you have to be there. If it's going to yeah. work for you to be in Panama, you have to be there. If you have to be in Uruguay, the whole world is yours. It just happened that you were born. Yeah. In a specific place, in a specific place. Yeah. You know? because you see, no, yeah, I the, hear you. The, there's the nature, the, there's a natural way of looking at it. Then there's also mm. another way of looking at it. It's like Malawi or any other country is a country. Yeah. They're all countries that are captured by some sort of mafias who run the show. And <laughs> yeah, yeah you have yeah. not subject yourself to that. You know, now it's a choice of do you, are you going to do that, or maybe go somewhere mm. else where you 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 find that it's. You, you get you, you get more value for your contribution to society, you know? Um, so yeah. I don't do anything for say for the sake of giving back. I do it for the sake of growth, growing the pie so mm-hmm. that everybody can eat, right? So it's business at the end of the day. It has to be profitable. Yeah. I'm not trying to be mm-hmm. a friend of the government uh, unless it makes mm-hmm. sense, so, you know? Mm. Yeah. I hear you, man. I hear you, man. I understand. I understand that kind of mentality. Um, it's a different mentality because of your of your exposure, but also you understand that um, you present value. The government has to provide something. Sadly, it doesn't uh, provide that. So at the end of the day, who owes who? Is it the government owes <laughs> you or you owe the government? Look, so the, it's the, a good conversation. Their job is literally to create an environment that allow people like you to thrive, right? Yeah. If you don't do it, you're going to move to, if they don't do it, you're going to move to the U.S. Who loses there? Because the smart person doesn't yeah. really lose, right? They, you're just going to take lose. podcast with, uh, with Matt Nioni. It's now a, a U.S. thing, and then yeah. it's generating income from there. So I think we have, to, a, be, we have to be more realistic in how we look at value these days, you know? I'm, I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's the truth of the matter. I'll tell you that I, I also have a startup. I haven't been talking about it in a while, but I have a startup that I uh, recently in, uh, in the US, um, under the Del- Delaware kind of thing of that happens that side. So I also understand the challenges that are here. Sometimes they push you to start pushing uh, in a different direction just because you want to explore other markets. Because here, uh, if you talk of, for instance, investors, someone, uh, can you inv- can you invest in my business? Everyone is trying to buy your business, not to invest in it. Mm-hmm. They don't understand the whole concept of investing now and then you're going to get money later on and then understanding that, okay, I will have a percentage and that percentage means A, B, C, D. So it's a different conversation when you are looking at it from the perspective like the way you have and the, how you are valuing the company so well, yeah so it, those things. it depends on how, how do you think those people made that money that you you're asking them to invest <laughs> 
obviously they are tender entrepreneurs. In Malawi is a tender entrepreneur country. It's basically they're supposed to uh, buy some clothes maybe for the military or maybe they wanted to provide meals for the hospitals and then somebody got it. It's one of those things. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody earned money in that sense, they just don't really understand yeah. how money works. You know, it's almost like yeah. if you, uh, you take a mansion and you take someone from the village, you put them in yeah. the mansion. Trust me in, in two yeah. years, that mansion is going to be super fucked up because they don't That's know true. how many times they need to clean the pool. They don't really know how, you know, how to check for all the lights in the house, how the sewer yeah. system have to be refreshed, how, how to change yeah. everything, right? They're just going to be mm. there and stay normally as how they live in the village. So it's almost, yeah. you take somebody who didn't deserve, who didn't create any value to make money. Yeah. They just don't understand the process. So you cannot expect that's them to understand thing. how equity investment work, you know? Yeah, that's very true. But let's talk about the, the buy Bitcoin Malawi, because I think that's your exchange in Malawi, right? Yeah, it's called Kodo now, talk but it's the same thing. Yeah, tell me more about it. It's Kodo right now. Yeah. So it's just the only way you can pretty much buy the first cryptocurrency exchange in Malawi. It's how people could buy cryptocurrency for the last few years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people were hearing about Bitcoin, but they didn't know where to buy it. And then we had so yeah. many people buy, bought from us and some of them mm -hmm. made millions as well because they mm -hmm. bought cryptocurrency early before the pump and then the boom market happens. And also, yeah. if you want to sell your crypto into cash, mm -hmm. you also have a solution to do that. And uh, mm -hmm. we built the application. Everything was working, was happy. The only flaw was that the banks, they don't have any APIs. Ish, other problems <laughs> and they couldn't understand what we're doing and then add on top of that you have the exchange controls because malawi is, is low on liquidity of us dollars so you would yes. sell your bitcoin in the country but now to take your money out to buy again you just mm. couldn't do it so we ended we ended mm. up taking a lot of losses also because of our money was stuck in the malawian kwacha and then you know what happens to it so yeah but it's still there we still help you know we're still helping uh you know I think cryptocurrency to me, this is the only philanthropic project that I have is making mm. cryptocurrency accessible to everybody because once it is, mm. we all now can change yeah. our lives in the way we see fit. Basically, that's yeah. it. It is the passport yeah. of money. Once you have crypto, mm. you're not really subject to all the exchange controls anymore. You don't care about the US dollar being rare because you have crypto. Yeah. You just jump on a plane or grab a bus, you go to the next country where you need to do business. You do it, you mm -hmm. move on with your life. So I see cryptocurrency sure, as that kind of tool. That's why I created the, the exchange. I'm happy that you're one of the frustrated people with the system here because I know people who have tried to develop so many systems, but because of the banking system, specifically if you want to transact, right, there's so many regulations and you can't even move high volumes in Malawi. It has to be very basic uh, amount of money that has to pass through. And this let me let me tell you a funny story about let me tell you a funny story about that. Uh, when I go yeah. to the bank, they always ask me for things like, oh, why are you st withdrawing this? Why are you trying to send this money? Uh, if I have yeah. a card, I think I have a card with one of the banks there. So I have yeah. to explain whether I'm spending it on school fees or some of the very, very basic right. things. I'm like, bro, I'm paying for a hotel. They're like, no, you cannot pay for a hotel $700. I'm like, no, I'm spending $700 a day on a hotel. And you, if you mm. have my money as a bank, you need to allow me to do yeah. that. But, you know, yeah. they say, no, we cannot support 700 spending. They say, I need to spend like 3000 a month or something. I'm like, what? You know, yeah. it's like a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's just crazy, bro. You know, so yeah, yeah, it is very unfortunate. So that's also another thing that people need to understand with crypto. If you mm. have 1 billion kwacha, it's a million, it's a million dollars now. It, you know, it's not that much, mm. but if you can take, you can't take that money out of the country of Malawi. It, it's only money when you, when you're within, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be mm -hmm. clever with it. To be like, okay, if you are accumulating as much local money as possible, do you think that money is really going to be worth it if you take it outside? No, mm -hmm. and that's and that's true. And and I need I need us to to echo that because that's the truth. If you have, let's say, a billion dollar in Malawi. Oh, a billion dollars. Oh, why would you be doing with a billion dollars? That's even no, too much. Not a billion dollars. <laughs> a billion, billion kwacha, right? Which is yeah. a million, a million US US dollars. Too. Yeah. You cannot move it out. You're going to face a lot of challenges. You, 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 it's your money, but 
Yeah, you can do it. Bro, try and move $100,000 uh, in Malawi. You know the deal. You know, you have to get right. approval from the Reserve Bank. So basically, yeah. if you have all your money in Malawi Kwacha, you're basically not rich in a way, in the world, in the, in the grand sense of things. Because even mm. if, you, if you say, I want to buy a big building in Dubai worth, you know, $10 million, well, mm. but you have all Malawi Kwacha over there, you have 10 billion Kwacha. It means you just cannot do it. There's no, way, can't there's no, there's no technically, technically you just cannot do it, period. There's no way to do yeah. it because if the country pays that money, then they, they run bankrupt of, um, of foreign reserves. Right. That's, but that's the reality. Yeah. The, yeah, the president was, was worrying about, uh, the same, uh, because we don't have fuel in the meantime. And I'm going to ask you those questions later on. Uh, and then he's saying that we don't have, um, uh, forex for us to buy and then we are going to the banks so we have secured 28 million from the bank we're expecting this 50 million from the bank i'm like okay they are securing from the banks it means they don't have even usd i'm like okay so what country are, you, are we having <laughs> so what if you want to invest somewhere? Like, where are you gonna get your usd now bro i'm telling you it's a big problem but it stems from one fundamental problem yeah old economics right mm -hmm. So you see everybody, they get it. Even in, I was in Uganda, like I told you, everybody is super excited about finding gold and all these African countries. The narrative yeah. is all about natural resources, right? Our natural resources, and they, they make money. But the mm. most important resource in the world, man, is human capital. Yeah. That's it, period. Mm. If you want to yeah. increase um, foreign reserves in Malawi, you have to get more people to work outside while they're still in Malawi, online jobs and all that. That is already a market that can bring in a lot of money a year. But you see, yeah. you have foreign reserve problems and then the internet is expensive. People cannot work online, which means they cannot make US dollars for themselves. And yes. that's where you end up in this situation because all the reserves are only coming from traditional ways of doing business, which is a slow way to do things, right? You look at India, that's look at how much US dollars they get from uh, the Indians working online, like, you know, doing gigs. Oh my God, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. But like, we have all our governments focused on old economics. They still want to buy maize here and sell it there. When you have millions of people who are educated, smart, hardworking, they just need to be unlocked to be in a global environment where they can contribute and make money. That's you know, the situation Malawi uh, and most of the countries we need to export our our labor force, right? For virtually, make the virtually, yeah, virtually. But it's cheaper. Yeah. All you need is the internet connection for people. That's all, mm -hmm. right? It will solve mm -hmm. a lot of problems because all of them they'll get the um, whether it's a PayPal account or whatever. All that money mm -hmm. is going to be wiring through to the mm -hmm. reserve bank anyway, right? That's what we need. Yeah. Right? There we go. Yeah, it doesn't happen like that, man. Uh, welcome to Malawi. You know it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, <laughs> rug pulls. Because I know most of the times when when doubters of crypto um, are there, the conversation is always about scams and the rug pulls that have been pulled, right? So I'm going to ask you about a couple of rug pulls that I know. Mm. And I want you to explain what happened and how people can maybe escape stuff like that. Right. So let's start with the Luna crash. I watched your, your stream on the Luna. You spoke about it. And there's a lot of um, uh, crazy stuff that is happening with Doge where people are just uh, putting money now and then they invest it and people will be excited and then they pull out and then people lose. Tell me more about the Luna crash, man. Well, the Luna crash is all about um, pyramid scheme or experimental stuff. So... Mm. It's just a, a story of greed. Um, I will tell you a more relevant story. So when now, you know, as we're running the exchange in Malawi, we had yeah. an influx of people buying Bitcoin and we're like, oh, that's incredible. People are getting the idea that Bitcoin is really important. Um, yeah. They would take 10 million of their own money, 10 million kwacha, buy Bitcoin. And we didn't know yeah. that they were investing it into scams, right? Uh, these earning, uh, daily earning programs, like all these pyramid schemes. Mm -hmm. They would take the Bitcoin, invest there so that they can be getting they say $50 or $100 a day or whatever the story was, right? Mm -hmm. And then two months later, it would collapse. They all lost their money. And then they would point to the police. So, you know, these guys, we were buying Bitcoin from them. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. what's the problem there? You know, like you, we sold you the Bitcoin. Where is it? Oh, we invested. So you, who did you invest it with? Not us. We only sold you an mm -hmm. asset. So there's two layers. There's a layer number one, which is the asset class itself, like Bitcoin. 
then now you yeah. have people who build apps. Uh, some of them are useful. Some of them are scams. So in the uh, in the Luna crash that you're saying, it was just a company that created a protocol. They created their mm. own money called UST. It, it was supposed to be a stable coin that's one to one to the dollar. And yeah. then they were accumulating more money, more Ethereum uh, or yeah. more Bitcoin by promising people gains, higher mm. interest rate per pay, pay, uh, pay year. So I do have yeah. friends of mine who had $15 million in that in in. in uh, anchor protocol. What? Yes. And what they did, they from Russia, they're from all over the place. They took all their money. They put it in Luna at a 15% APY a year. They're like, look, I'll be living a Dubai millionaire rich lifestyle for free because it's all free money. It was yeah. good when, when it was worth it until all of it was Christ. lost. So you have hey, to ask man. yourself, how did that happen? They over leveraged themselves. And then when yeah. the market started crashing, they just couldn't keep up with the liquidity problems mm, and then mm, other people mm. traded against it and then it collapsed so you need to know this is a company that was doing that it's not bitcoin right it's not if, bitcoin it's a company it's like people are taking advantage of something exactly so if you bought bitcoin from kodo or you know where four years ago mm. you kept that bitcoin in your own wallet you still have it today so mm. that is bitcoin for you that's how it works but if you took it and invested in another thing that's promising you more gains and you lost it well, that's not a Bitcoin problem. That's your problem and greed or some failed experiment that was happening. Yeah, and I think it's more or less like um, it's more or less like uh, how scams are done anyway, where Absolutely. people would promise you uh, high gains and then you have invested with them. But yeah, they crash as a company and then you lose everything that you, you invested with them. So I think it's not like there's a problem with with the Bitcoin, but there's a problem with people that want to take advantage when they are doing the experiments. Yeah, absolutely. It's that. It's scams. You have to be clever. You have to be like just wiser. You know, there's no yeah. easy money in the world. Um, yeah. The story of Bitcoin and crypto is well documented. If you really want to make money in crypto, you know what you need to do. Buy yeah. and hold, you know, invest and hold it. Because yeah. based on how Bitcoin is designed and many other cryptocurrencies, the value is more yeah. likely to go up in value over time, not overnight. Right? That's the thing. I think everyone is looking for an overnight kind of uh, uh, transformation. And I've heard you several times that you talk about hold for a long time, which is something that I think even uh, most of the, the African mentality is you want to get rich tomorrow, right? Yeah, look, you have to want to get rich tomorrow. It doesn't have to be that complicated too, right? Um, yeah. But you just have to now be realistic in understanding the type of play you're making and the type of risk. Yeah. Making a little mm. bit of money is better than losing all your money because you're being greedy. So you just have to be smart yeah. enough to not lose it. M making money is mm. easy. Anybody can do it. Keeping it yeah. is, is, you know, it's now that's the most complicated part. So we all can make money in crypto or in other means, whatever. But yeah. even if you make money in crypto, can you hold it together? Like I told you an example, somebody makes 15 million, nice. They yeah. lose it in anger yeah. in one day, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's just how it it's works. Crazy. You have to it's learn how okay. to keep money. Yeah. Uh, another one. Uh, tell me more about Safe Moon. I uh, heard about the disaster of Safe Moon. Uh, what happened there? Well, that I never really invested in Safe Moon at all. If anything that I did, I warned my. Uh, my followers on my YouTube channels do not touch it. And uh, just like another pump and dump, you know, these are mm. like cryptos that are, they played on people's psychology. So there's this concept of um, lot size that mm. sometimes people don't really understand when it comes to, it's just a math problem, I think. So you have mm. something that's worth 1000 and yeah. something that's worth $1. Mm. An average person will think that the one dollar thing is cheaper without mm. really trying to evaluate what the value underlying there is, right? So what people yeah. are doing, they say, oh, Bitcoin is $20,000. Oh, that is expensive for one Bitcoin. But Safe Moon yeah. is 0 0.00000006, which means if <laughs> I buy Safe Moon and it only goes to $10, I am rich as fuck. And then mm. what happened after? Safe Moon pump and it's a small group of people that control the coin and they pump the price to get everyone excited. They tell their friends, they put more money in, the more money you put, they dumping on you and then eventually it collapsed. And then 
most people lost money as well. So these are, you know, these stories should not be scaring people. They're just literally degenerate yep. and stupid ideas that people do. And if you're greedy, you end up falling for them, to lose money. But for most of, most of us, we never lose money in crypto because we keep it simple. Buy, hold, mm -hmm. you know, I trade as well, but that's just a personal thing that I do. Nobody has to do it. Yeah, that's true. And the last the last one on this one is Celsius. Uh, I think there was a disaster of Celsius as well. Uh, yeah. Tell me more about that. Uh, Celsius, the they, the same similar to to Luna, in which they were kind of entangled in a way. So Celsius is like a bank in crypto. Yeah, the idea of cryptocurrency is basically to kill banks because banks are not necessary. But now yeah. another company came and say. Bring all your crypto, we're going to keep it for you, and we're going to be giving you interest 15% a year. For crypto people, mm. that's, oh, wow, that's beautiful, right? Because if yeah. I have, if I put in $1 million in that protocol, and I'm earning 15% mm. a year, how much is that? Mm. Right? That's, that's 150000 right? Yeah. There you go. So people would put money, and then after they realize that, okay, these guys, they took all their money, they live mm. rich by taking more risk by putting it in Luna in other platforms that were also promising huge gains. And when they started yeah. to collapse, also they mm. could not now pay out the people who had money in those platforms. And then they lost it. I had a little bit of money in uh, uh, in Celsius myself, yeah. but it was yeah. insignificant. So it's all good. Nah. Okay. Cool. I hear you, man. Uh, NFTs. Uh, are NFTs dying? Uh, or it's just that there's a, there's a, there's a silence on how they have been pushed now, because I think it, when the NS, NFTs were coming through, uh, the conversation was heavy. People were selling JPEGs, uh, with a lot of money. And I think Snoop Dogg came in, made a lot of, uh, money in that has been doing, uh, shows, uh, where he's invited to do whatever around the NFTs. What's your say on NFTs, man? Uh, NFTs are not dead, but you look at it this way. In 2017, people were doing NFTs, right? Mm -hmm. We knew about NFTs. You know, there was like uh, um, uh, CryptoKitties. Uh, yeah. Some of my friends, like Michael, you know, created his own uh, NFT back then. Uh, so yeah. we knew about this stuff. If you're really on the ground in the world of this space in blockchain, you know that they're happening. This is the time yeah. where people develop and build things and experiment with things. The noise mm. is usually the price related. So you heard about NFTs because people were making money, right? Easy mm. money. Now mm. the liquidity has gone down because it's a bear market. Nobody's talking about them. It doesn't mean mm. that there's no value being built. Now mm. in a year or two or three, you might just see big NFT news coming back again. And then people are like, oh, NFTs are back. Then they try to make money. They don't make any money because they were not investing when the market was underpriced. So right now, NFTs are still there. Just that the mm. prices are extremely low. There's not too much mm. liquidity. It's harder to make money in the short term. But if mm. you buy the right stuff, I still think that you can make a lot of money in NFTs. I'm still buying right now a lot of blue chips. So that's just, you know, okay. that's just me. But I think... There is a huge opportunity yeah. in NFTs, but largely uh, beyond the NFTs themselves is the metaverse mm. uh, that is growing yeah. as an industry. Uh, we have seen Facebook mm. jump on it. And mm. yeah. actually, that's the number one reason that I'm in Dubai is to basically mm. um, build more on the metaverse side of things. And it's happening here, man. We're building like crazy. Yeah. Everybody mm. is excited. There's a lot of money being invested in the projects. Oh, so, um, I think this is the, the metaverse NFT ecosystem is what's going to dominate the next yeah. market, you know, gaming and all I that. Think so. I, th I think, I think the future of NFT will be more of that, uh, where the games, uh, the virtual offices as, 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 uh, Meta has been trying to, to do it would be the dominant factors. And I, I've seen a lot of money coming through. And yeah, if you're working on that, it means you're working on the future. Imagine if you're talking about metaverse in Malawi. <laughs> <laughs> bro like you know it, it, it's not it's not really that far fetched because like you know this in this hotel that i'm staying in i paid yeah. with cryptocurrency but someone what? there's so many people in government who still think that crypto is a scam if you damak is the largest developer in dubai they own mm -hmm. majority of the buildings if you go to dubai you see damak damak everywhere or you go on yeah. the website you see they tell you we accept cryptocurrency for wow. buying an apartment 
uh, for renting, depending on which agency you're dealing with. And they're now mm-hmm. looking into, and because me and my friend here are hosting an, uh, a weekly NFT meetup, and we mm-hmm. get the loyal families join these meetups to learn more yeah. about NFTs so that they can be oh, able to, okay. they're like, we want to use NFTs to issue uh, title deeds and stuff. Have you ever tried to buy property in Malawi, like uh, from customary people? Uh, I know, I know. I, I'm in that business somehow. So, hey, she's crazy, man. It's man. crazy. Yeah. Because I, of uh, the the ownership issue is always a, is an issue. And I it's think unclear. Is it's yeah. unclear. Mm-hmm. I tried, like, there's no website even that says, yo, if you want to buy land, this is the process. These are the documents you need to have. I went mm. to all the villages. I got the, uh, the the chiefs trying to scam me. The you know the people <laughs> around them. They keep telling you, oh, "Buy this. Give us money. This. Oh, we need money. Oh, you need to to bring a goat. You need to do this." Like yo, just tell me the freaking process. I want to pay. Yeah. Oh, you know, which mm. can be simply simplified by um, a lot of this technology if we embrace it. You can literally yeah. do a, a home exchange or um, a property exchange as an NFT yeah. as a token. Boom! Within a second. I send you the money, you send me the truck, and I'm done, I move on. You know, and the government's right. That's true, man. That's true, man. Okay, let's talk about podcast and chill with my G. Um, yep. I have seen you there. Uh, I saw you there. Um, and I've seen that you guys, yeah, you have created this kind of bond where you are. I think you have helped them to get a gig. I don't know. Because I saw they were talking about uh, getting this other gig, uh, most like a, a crypto funder is trying to fund their, their their podcast in a way and you're coming in with some episodes that where you're just talking about crypto are you the funder or there's another agency that you're working with on that deal what do you mean a funder and maybe an advertiser sort of say no um i just you know uh I, you know i met mac g when i used to have my a podcast myself it's still there but it's not that active. Yeah. It's called the Survival Skills Podcast. Survival Skills Podcast. Yeah, I saw it. The one you're having with Penwar. So yeah, I follow you. Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. I watched Mac when he had thirteen thousand followers, subscribers, right? And yeah. I just saw that this guy is going to be huge. I flew to, yeah. to to Johannesburg, had a podcast with him. I lost it, but um, uh, I knew mm-hmm. that you know Mac is going to be big. So um, I just you know eventually we became friends. And, yeah. um, I just, uh, helped, um, with, uh, to, to come up with a deal with him and buy bit because I know that it's canceled. Mm. You know, you have all this mm. cancel culture bullshit going on these days that people yeah. who are competent. They're even making it like people who don't do anything with their lives. They try to make it harder for competent people to get things done. Right. Yeah. So I looked at the situation. Then I tried to, um, I saw a, a good match between what he's doing and the audience mm. that he has and what the people are really looking for. And then I'm coming yeah. from the crypto side. So I saw a good bridge, like, look, you can get Bybit and MacG come mm. together and then they can have a, um, a, a deal. And then now Bybit is a sponsor of, um, of uh, Podcast and Chill. I didn't really have much yeah. to do with it. I just introduced them to each other and you can see that um, now no, they work that's together. The that's the power of uh, the social capital, right? Because you guys are friends and then you're able to, you're able to come through. And I, I like how uh, the crypto world uh, comes through to people that are constantly in that kind of space, because uh, I think in crypto, you have that kind of uh, more inclusion other than the inclusion that people talk about right now, which is people don't care about who you are, but they want to do business with you. They do business. They know the value that you bring on the table and they respect that without strings attached. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a real dem- democratized ecosystem. There's no in crypto you don't have so many doors. Go get a stamp from this, you know, <laughs> all, that, all that bullshit, right? Do you yeah. really produce value? Can we exchange mm. value? Cool. Let's do. Let's work together. You, you look at yeah. crypto. As much as people hate it, they don't understand that crypto is based on community. It's a community mm. based uh, ecosystem, right? So it's all about exchanging mm-hmm. and growing together. It's not about authority and status and all the, those things. So, yeah, yeah, you know, for me, mm-hmm. just personally, if I see someone who is doing a good thing and there's something yeah. that I can contribute, especially mostly uh, it, it can be financially in a way that I know how to make money. So if I see mm-hmm. a competent person, I know how to come in and say, look, you can uh, make money you by doing do. X and a. Or if I have a plug I can plug them into, I can always do yeah. it. It's just natural yeah. for me. 
No, that's good, man. And I, the, I like, I like the sense of doing that. In fact, man, uh, I, I got inspired by my G. I should be honest. I got inspired. Uh, it's just that the the names match somehow. <laughs> my name is McDonald Nyoni, <laughs> and then because McDonald Nyoni is too big, uh, it, it couldn't work on the branding. So I just put Macnyoni. So yeah. when I say uh, podcast with Macnyoni, we're like, nah, you want to be like podcast with my G. But the thing is. I feel like uh, the the uh, the pie is too big for everyone to tap into, and I respect the guy, man. I've seen him uh, coming with great content, uh, speaking about things that he's so bored about. And yeah, when I saw you, a fellow Malawian in a way, I was like, yeah, this is a good plug. Uh, maybe he's gonna plug me later on to also uh, have an interview with him. Um, yeah, 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 anytime. Doing- that, that that that's easy. Just a matter of timing and where you know. If do you want to bring yeah. him over to Malawi, or what is your idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I need to i need to trade in crypto so i make a lot of money for him to for, to, to fly him here <laughs> but look you know it, it, being in south africa um south africa has a special place in my heart because of what the young generation is doing not the odd guys yeah. so much but yeah. mostly the young the younger generation it's yeah. bro like the, le- the level of collaboration and mm. appreciation within the community of young people who are competent Keyword yeah. company is extremely yeah. high, right? Anybody who yeah. is doing things, they understand that look, we cannot do it on your own. And a lot of people are also starting to understand that, like you say, the pie is too big, bro. There is um, more than enough in the world for everyone. Like for we everybody. can we yeah. can have Macnyoni, Mac Joe, Mac this, Mac, we can we can be all become Max, no problem, and yes. still be able to do podcasts and eat. Right. Mm. So you know, I mm-hmm. I started working with uh, DJ Spoo, and then they also had yeah. his own podcast. And they so all that, yeah. go on each other's podcast to try to help each other's grow. And that's how it's supposed to work. You know, that's, that's how it's supposed to work. You want man. to have uh, a, a bunch of friends who are successful, not brokes. That's just the reality yeah. of it. Right. That's the thing. That's, that's the thing. thing. That's it's, it. it's different. But you, you, you can have to get a guest here. Um, uh, I, I do you, you, you have some connections, man, but yeah, I know, I know I've seen that happening. I've seen the DJ school going to, uh, like Mark G is so going to DJ school's podcast. I've seen Penuel going to Mark G's podcast. You know, that kind of cross pollination that is happening yeah. is good, man. It's good because that brings the promotion because we're all doing the same thing at the, at the end of the day, we're trying to grow. We're trying to build something. And at the end of the day, who do we employ? We employ our fellow people somehow. But oh, look, think of it. Why collaboration and growth is very important is this. Yeah. The more you guys are doing the podcast and they grow, yeah. Yeah. it's making a statement again and again that, oh, look, podcast is the way to go. So yeah. all the advertisers, the all, you know, the old mentality guys that are spending money on the radio and that, that shit doesn't work. They will yeah. now be forced. They'll have no option than going in spending money on the podcast. So imagine yeah. if the podcast channels like you, the, let's say the podcast yeah. industry gets just 20% of the uh, budget that goes towards traditional advertising. Everybody's going to make money. Yeah, yeah. true. True. So, and the numbers that podcasts are getting right now, the traction, the engagement is huge than the than, yeah. than, uh, than video right now. But yeah, you, you, you get the reason. Sometimes they are just cartels that are managing these deals. So. Yeah, yeah, it will change. All it takes, it's going to take one person like me who works with us in the in the cartel business who's going to change yes. it. Who's going to fuck shit up yeah. and fix things yeah. the way they're supposed to be to make them work, right? True. And it will happen. True. They're not going to yeah. run for long. Eventually, it will happen. It will happen, man. But yeah, uh, also you you can also become a crypto investor and also uh, invest in us uh, in in one or the other. Well, yeah, let me pitch sure. this right now. <laughs> I'm, 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 more, I'm more than happy to do that. You know, it's done. Yeah, we can, we'll talk I, about it. I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should we should talk about it, and I and I, and I like the word is done. People watch this, uh. So, but the thing is, I believe there is a lot that people need to learn about crypto because the more people learn, that's the more that people will be educated to to go towards that. Because people are now realizing, specifically, I would talk about the case of Malawi. They're now realizing that kwacha, if you keep kwacha in your account, you are just losing it every day, right? There's the the chances of it appreciating is zero, 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 maybe to zero. Right, but the chances for you to uh, to get something at the end of the day using crypto and lev- and having the right mindset of how you're going to do it is the best way to go forward. So yeah, I think there's a lot that needs to be done uh, in Malawi. 
So yeah, yeah look, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's beyond, it's beyond just like, um, um, Bitcoin. I think people like you, you have now, it's like Mac G as well. You know, you, you, you guys now have the, the, the power to um, influence people's mindsets. The problem we have yeah. is not really a crypto problem. It's, um, uh, a mentality problem. You know, it's, it goes yeah. right down to colonial, colonialism and culture and traditions as well. Right. To the point that we have a conflict between living the way that we have to live and winning. So it's almost like you have to choose one really, you know? And sometimes that might be a little bit harder for people to do. But I think with a new podcast, we're going to influence new ways of thinking with our platforms like Crypto University. Uh, yeah. We'll now introduce people to new ways of thinking about economics and new ways yeah. to move value and to move money yeah. and to set up online e-commerce, how to sell yourself. Yeah. Uh, we're now yes. doing different types of courses in Crypto University beyond cryptocurrency. We have a content yeah. course coming on. We have an e-commerce yeah. course coming in where we teach people how to set up an e-commerce shop with yeah. Bitcoin. No need for a card, no need for whatever, just purely with Bitcoin. Wow. So, wow. yeah. No, there's, there's a lot. Uh, honestly, the, if, if, if Bitcoin, if the crypto is going towards that direction of building e-commerce platforms, that's where the future is. It's all about buying and selling. And if we control that, at the end of the day, uh, you, you get the value from it. Oh, look, if, if cool. you don't, if you don't buy crypto, this is what's going to happen. Your girlfriend mm. is going to leave you because you'll make so much money. It, majority <laughs> of our customers in Kodo, how, who buys high volumes? Women, for some reason. Serious? The men in Malawi, I think they're spending too much time at the bar or somewhere, you know? Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all booze and stuff, right? Right, you know, the women are so, are so are just much more focused for some reason, you know? So if you don't get on the crypto train yourself and really learn what's going on, your girlfriend yeah. is going to make so much money that you're going to become a man of no value and then she will leave you, you know? Really? You know how it works. Because the women are buying like crypto, they can buy this crypto without even telling you. They buy the crypto, they just keep it under the pillow, <laughs> and then eventually they, you know, it grows and they become rich. So yeah. Now, yeah. That, you, now that you're talking about women, uh, what do you think about Andrew Ted, man? Uh, Andrew Ted being banned and all those things. What do you think about that? He's also doing something. I think I don't know. He doesn't talk more about crypto, but I know he has a hustlers university. I don't yeah, know, he has a college hustler. or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think about it? I think it's just wrong to ban a person. I don't really agree with much of what he says. Uh, yeah. However, I do agree with some of the things that he says, especially um, for men. I think we have been good at society has only been telling women what to do, how to become the, the perfect woman. Right. You need mm. to look good. You need to do this. Mm. You need to be educated. And then you need to do you know, all these, you know, to, you need to know how to make a home, how to clean the house. Okay. Yeah. But what about men? Are you just allowed to become a loser in life? Not really. Mm -hmm. So I like mm -hmm. the message to tell men that, yo, you need to really be high valued, be high valued, create something of value, yeah. work out, yeah. look good, have it all. If you really want to yeah. be a man of high status, I agree with that part, but there are certain mm -hmm. elements that I don't agree with, but just because I don't agree with it, doesn't mean that yeah. it shouldn't exist. If mm -hmm. I don't like something, what I do on my YouTube, I see it in my feed, I click, right click, not interested. Then the yeah, audience knows that, that a, I don't want to yeah. see that shit. I'm never going to see it again. Mm -hmm. But we yeah. live in a different society right now where there's definitely some people at the high level who mm -hmm. want to, well, it has always existed, who like to control the narrative in the way they see fit because there's a business attached to mm -hmm. them, right? Uh, there's a business attached mm. to depression at the moment, selling medication to depressed people and all that. Uh, those mm. people, they need a specific narrative for sure. And on and on. Mm. So mm. I don't, I just don't like that they canceled him the way they did. It's, it's not right in my opinion. Mm. Mm. But you know, he's a smart person. So it's not like he's going to go broke at the end of the day. He's okay. Yeah, that is, that's a good thing. I think he made a lot of money already. Um, well, the, my, my, money, my money aside, he's a competent person. So if you're a competent person, yeah. you know, you, you, you cannot really steal someone's um, uh, energy and mental prowess and hard work. Mm. They're gonna, mm. if, you, if, they, if, you lose, if you lose this podcast, you can literally just set up another one tomorrow. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> come on. Uh, you Because you have competence in so many areas, right? You can do so many things for you to make money. And I think that's the thing that he has always talked about in, in his uh, addresses. Only that sometimes, mm-hmm. yes, you, you may sound extreme uh, because the messaging has been one-sided for a long time. So a different messaging is always questionable. Um, but I think, yeah, there's there's a... Well, do, you, do you actually think that is true? That some of his messaging is questionable. It has been uh, towards tilted towards one side. No, no, no. I, what I'm saying is that his messaging. Mm. Uh, there's been a one-sided messaging, which you have said as well, which is more for uh, women. Uh, your special uh, who there's this program for you. There's this for you. I look good focus on career, build your career, don't just have children and stuff, which is a good thing, good messaging to mm. promote women. But there hasn't been a strong message that talks about men, uh, which may sound now strange to some other, to other people because they have they are not accustomed or they are not familiar with this new messaging, which is men, you need to know your value. You, if, if, if you are associating with a woman or you are dating a woman who is not bring anything on the table, leave the person because they are, they are bringing you down, which is something that people, like, oh, no, 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 don't do that because we believe uh, in a different narrative. So yeah, it's like breaking it, coming, breaking the current narrative, which is something that sounds strange to the mainstream. Well, look, most men, most men are, are right now they're complaining because <laughs> this is what I don't agree with Andrew Tate with is this. All these men, mm. they're all on the men, men message, women this and women that. And yeah. you know why? Mostly, mostly it's because they're getting their ass kicked in the real world. I, I told you before, mm. women are just more focused at the moment, right? Mm. So a lot of guys, they used to be, it used to be cheap and easy to be a man back then, right? Because well, yeah. in, in a traditional sense, to be a man, you have to be a provider, really, right? It used to be easy. The women, they stay home. <laughs> The, the, the driving was all a man's job. Everything was a man's job. So even a loser mm-hmm. man can go out there, get a job and look like a man because he's providing. The woman stays at home. Mm-hmm. Now the women, mm-hmm. they have access to the same opportunities. You want to drive, mm-hmm. you want to fly a plane? Well, the woman can also just become a pilot. So a pilot. Yeah. you have now doubled the competition. For you to really yeah. win, you need to become super competent. And most men, they feel like they have to be on top. They have to earn more than their women. Mm-hmm. They have to be the provider mm-hmm. still. And now it's just so hard to do because if you're a weak man, you're just not going to outwork a woman who is so focused. When you're going every night, yeah. you're going to, to booze with your boys in the evening. You just smoke weed. You um, just shit, you know? And yeah. then are you going to complain yeah. that, ah, oh, you know, women, this, they're supposed to be staying at home and do this. It's like, no, it's because you feel threatened now. Right. So yeah. it is what it yeah. is. You deal with it. Everybody has to deal with it. You want to be the, you want to become the best man. You have to work 10 times as hard now because the competition is out there. It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. It shows to be uh, an easy way. Of course, not easy in terms of how men get things uh, because men have been suffering already. You have to plow and do whatever in the old times, right? And even in the recent times, men has to add to spend so a lot of time. But in terms of accessing things, it used to be men only. But now because the pie is being divided between men and women, so it becomes an an issue and then people are feeling... Well, it's not even, um, di- it's not even divided, bro. It, the, the pie is right there. Everybody can get it. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. So we're not, we're not living it's in right. the hunter-gatherer situation where you have to now plow every day, you know, hunt the lions, whatever, uh, kill some animal yeah. just to feed your family. Bro, it's literally, yeah. it's mental prowess, you know, pr- prowess now. You have to sit down, think on your laptop, communicate with people, work with the world, yeah. generate value. And if you spend all your time smoking weed and, you know, watching football and or doing all the stupid shit that men like to do, bro, you're just not going to yeah. win. It's simple math, right? Yeah. Cool. I hear you, man. I, no, um, I, I feel, no, I feel no, zero remorse to men who complain about women just because there's equality now. That's just straight stupid. No, no, no. So most of them because they can't fight. They it uh-huh. used to be easy, as you said. They can't fight now. Uh, they think like the more women are empowered, it scares their their potential. What <laughs> I like about the whole conversation is now that men just need to know that you are valuable as well. Not that you can't do you can't do it, and you've been doing it already. Come on, for some for how many years? It's just that you need to do it more uh, because it's may not gonna be easy as it used to be. I hear you, man. I have some questions for you from. Malawian questions. Mm. So I'm going to ask you those ones and then um, some crypto questions and we're going to close. So yeah. uh, one of it, 
how do you think we can solve the fuel crisis in Malawi right now? Uh, if you want to have you get fuel, I'm telling you, it's a journey. I think it's two to three hours for, of you standing on a queue somewhere, which is wasting productive hours. What do you think? How do you think we can solve these challenges? You have to start. You have to solve them at a high level first. Um, mm. uh, you know, it comes to management, which speaks to government. I hate I hate politics, so I hate that I always have yeah. to talk about uh, government. Sometimes it starts yeah. at, the, at the high level. Um, a country like yeah. Malawi, it's like a poor household. It's like when mm. I was poor, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you you have to think. You need someone who is creative. And yeah. a visionary, like someone who, if you ask them, what would be, what would Malawi look like in five years? They'll yeah. give you so many ideas of wh- how things are going to happen in a new way. Not somebody who's going to say, oh, we're going to increase the GDP of the country by this much. Uh, we're going to have more jobs. And we're going to, it's like, bro, come on. You need someone like a Steve Jobs, bro, who has a completely new way of looking at the world and how value works. Right. Mm. And then you need someone who is also feisty enough to uh to attack who is an aggressive person yeah sees corruption fire that person but most mm. importantly we need a complete overhaul of the political system at the top it's the same people i used to watch on tv when i was young bro you still see yeah. they're jerking the same message it's so annoying mm. you know so mm. we need new people who can now think creatively about we got a, a fuel crisis how do we solve it you know the problem with the electricity in mm. my opinion, whether in South Africa is in Malawi is because the ministers, they're not even engineers themselves, but the, the electricity <laughs> problem is an engineering problem at first, mm. right? Mm. But if you have bad people at the top who don't understand how things work from a physics perspective, they're just not going to do shit. So that's the layer yeah. number one. Layer two is we need, uh, we need to attract more US dollars. We, mm. we export almost nothing in the country. So we have to focus on the human capital. So that's the best that we have. We have millions yeah. of people who are just wasting their time because there's just no opportunity. Create an environment mm. that allows people to work online. Make internet as cheap as possible. Take all the money you want to spend on building classrooms to make the internet infrastructure more mm. stable and much better so that the internet is cheaper. People can work online. Mm. They'll be earning $200, $500, $2,000 a month. That is revenue for the country. That's how you're going to solve it. Otherwise, you're going to end up borrowing money. That's where this is going now. You're going to end up borrowing money to solve it and you're in debt. More money. Yeah. So. Man, I like your ideas about, about how the, the total overhaul of the government and the, and the focus. And that's a, that's a reality. Because right now, if you're going to look at the solutions that are on the table, it's basically borrowing to the banks and mm-hmm. borrowing to banks and then trying to negotiate with IMF. IMF, please allow us, give us a credit facility. That's another borrowing. So there's nothing like creating value. Uh, uh, let me ask you a question money. rather than, uh, do you think education, as you know, it's schooling. Do you really think it makes people smart or dumb? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's, it's, it's double-sided to an extent. Um, education as it is, the way that people look at it, complicates people's minds. It takes, it gives them a path that they have to follow. It's only now that new, the new kids, right, that are coming right now, that are now seeing education, seeing that after finishing school, you get no, you get no job for five years. You're still running around as an intern somewhere and you're not making anything. And you're like, why was I even doing this? And then they learn a particular skill or they maybe learn maybe one simple skill, like developing websites and they're making a lot of money. So there, there's a trend now. So education as we know it has complicated how we think and it's bad. But the new thinking that is coming through right now is now bringing the difference of how we're thinking. So I would say, Double-sided. It helps you. I am able to speak English because I learned somewhere because of this education. Uh, but am I able to make money? I think our education does not translate into making money. In the it's, it's, it's not just making money. I mean, I learned my English through listening to gangster rap music, right? So, you know, if you read... <laughs> And then I started learn, learning Portuguese through... Uh, when I was in Brazil a few months ago, I, yeah. I was learning Portuguese through an app. Uh, yeah. obviously you have to, to learn how to read and write. What I'm talking about more is like all these ministers and all the rich people mm. in our countries, they go to Europe to study and guess what they mm. come up with the ideas of, okay, if you need money, you go to IMF that basically no 
idea, no new idea or new way of thinking of generating value. They just think that there is a playbook of how to Mm. pretty much do anything. But you need to remember, we're a country that as a continent, we were colonized. Mm. The education that's there was, is, it was designed by the colonizers. Like, how do you expect that you're going to transform it based on their own education, which was, you know, within their own agenda? It's just stupid if you think about it. So I don't personally think that you can change, you can get a lead, an effective leader in Africa mm. who goes to the UK or to the US to study. That's just crazy. You know, for me, I, I agree with you. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, mindset change that needs to be done because I, I will tell you this: how people look at development from my the way I look at things happening right now is basically eighty uh, percent of Malawis are farmers. Let's empower farmers, and they get a lot of money and they push it there. There's a lot of corruption that chokes everything, so it chokes even the basic necessities that are supposed to go. The farmers doesn't go there, yep. so productivity which was supposed to be low, is going to be low more. And then we're not going to have anything, no food, no borrow. We borrow, we give people relief. After relief, we expect NGOs. NGOs will come. They will fix a, the immediate problems, not the long term. And then the cycle continues. So there's nothing or nothing like breaking out of that, that, no. that space. Right? Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing, right? It's basically us repeating the whole cycle. It's basically that. So when I look at it, and when I look at this crypto, I look at uh, uh, the new economy uh, where people are now looking at different options, right, of, 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 of the same uh, alternative economies. I see this is a way to go. Only that people don't know. The right? internet, yeah. You, yeah. The internet is, come on, we're talking of 15 to 17% of Malawians are on the internet, right? I think it's up to 20 right now. That's... That's like 2 million plus or oh, 3 million somewhere there. It's bad. But, you know, but then we're talking about building more classrooms, you know, uh, building more blocks. You're like, bro, come on. It's just, it's, it's unacceptable. We're in 2022. I, 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 yeah. You know? I come from uh, the NGO space, right? So I understand some of these things, uh, the, the thinking around it. But as, I, as I'm telling you that, you'll find that this, I asked one of my guests that question. We have more billions coming to Malawi every year. But the status of the poverty is going, is, is just high, right? It's going up and up. People are still struggling more than they used to, even with that support. And you ask questions, is this working? Obviously not. So we need an alternative economy. We need, we need to cancel receiving money, uh, donor aid, because the whole donor, we need to cancel donor aid. If you want to cancel anything, don't cancel people on the internet. Cancel donor aid and NGOs. And here's why. You will never, I mean, it, this mentality translates. This is some of the mentality that I had to break out of myself, right? As a Malawian, you look up to institutions and foreign people. You over-respect them because from the government level, you have been fed by someone else. So you see yeah. that a lot of us are become so passive in our character, right? Mm, because it's a yes, mm, one, yes, one mentality, right? right? You, you, yeah. you, you see, umona and zoom, can go, yeah. You know, one, I'm with one. You know, you feel inferior. Yeah, yeah you feel so yeah. inferior. It's all the same. Mm-hmm. So why do you think, you, you look at um, uh, our ministers, they go outside. You, I see them here. You see mm-hmm. them, the demeanor is just not that. It's just, they just feel inferior when they're walking around because they, speak, they look at everyone as their bosses because they're asking mm-hmm. for help. Imagine what kind of person you'd be if you didn't have your company and the podcast and your strategy for making money is asking for favors. Hey, man, uh, can you help me <laughs> another uh, 20,000 today? Nobody would respect you, period. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, tr- it's crazy. I think, I think we'll, we'll talk about this government thing because I like your, th- your thinking. I think it, it can be an interesting one because we are, uh, as we go towards so many transformations that are happening, the challenges, I think this kind of conversations are necessary. But because we're talking about crypto, let's, Ended with a few a few uh, conversations on crypto. So the future of crypto, from your perspective, what is the future right now uh, with the uh, the inflation? Because obviously there's a, there's a huge inflation right now. Only that I, th- I think people don't want to talk about the word inflation, but globally I feel like there's an inflation. Uh, what is the future of crypto right now? Well, if you <laughs> if your currency is being debased uh twenty five percent overnight, then that's inflation for you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in one candlestick. <laughs> so I don't think anybody needs any more proof that there's inflation going on. 
Um, yeah. But, you know, cryptocurrency is there for the tech. It's not going anywhere. It just keeps on growing. The only distance is just that people don't know about it, like you said, right? And yeah. I think more countries, the, the world, especially the bigger countries, China and Russia and America, they're not having, uh, they're not in harmony at the moment. They're fighting against each other. And that ties yeah. into the currencies. And it will reach to a point where like, Nobody want to use someone else's uh, currency anymore. I'm Bitcoin, telling you, that's true. Exactly. You know, until cryptocurrency yeah, is the yeah. only solution because it doesn't belong to any country specifically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if that will happen. It might take 10 or 20 or 30 years. It will happen. And when it happens, now other countries are going to start to fall, which is going to be too late. So if you want to be part of that transformation early before it happens, look into yeah. cryptocurrency. It's still going to be the... You know, if you watch this video and you don't do anything about it, it's on you. Trust me, five years later, you're going to be like, oh, I remember watching that episode uh, on Magnoni podcast. I just didn't do anything about it. Mm. I've heard so many of those stories many times. So it's up on you. I hear you, man. But what people don't know around crypto is there's a lot that you can do. Um, I remember seeing you one of the the podcasts you did and you were talking about smart contracts. There's a lot can be done with using smart contracts there's DAO, i think it's decentralized autonomous organizations that people can create uh how do you think those like now tools that can be done on the blockchain can now solve some of these uh head world problems because i think they can yeah of they course issue- i mean if you look if you look at um um so i was in in malawi the other day um mm. i was trying to get my id and stuff Mm-hmm. And I saw these women, a group of them, yeah. they're, they're absolutely poor. And mm. they've been coming to the office where they have to get the ID mm. to check if it has come out. Hey. And they spend transport money to move from the village just to come mm-hmm. down to do that. And then they told, oh, no, it's not out by this guy who is uh, an absolute nutcase who is just like shouting at them. Oh, I told you it's not here yeah. yet. You know, what are you doing here? And yeah. I was like, wow, this is just a, a pure misallocation of resources and people's time, right? That's very true, yeah. This can be done in a blockchain effectively without even trusting some manager in the office to be able to select who he gives the ID to. You can automate all this shit. It's cheaper to do it mm. that way than getting people mm. to move in and out. We have voter mm. fraud that's hap- that ha- happens even in America yeah. that can be solved with, um, with cryptocurrency. You have a lot of yeah. legal protocols that really can be part of a smart contract. They take care of themselves. We don't have to think too much about them. Even yeah. uh, agreement between uh, entities. Um, mm. You have a supply chain management for farming can be utilized yeah. on the blockchain. Man, the, the applications are endless. The technology mm. is there. It just depends on someone who is creative to look and say, huh, we can do this with that. That's it. Yeah. And that's true. And that's why people need to go to your crypto investor to learn more about crypto. I hope you will be teaching people later on how to code in the blockchain, because I think that's where there's, there's a market. There's need for people to be building these smart contracts, these DAO platforms. And so, Here, so, here's an idea for you. We, we're already doing yeah. smart contract development at Crypto University. We have been doing that. Okay, great. We, we have a course for that that's free uh, as a beginner course. People can check it out. But, mm. for example, imagine we just turn all our universities, the technical universities mm. into, there will be blockchain development universities. If we're producing mm. 3,000 people um, a year, it means we're creating 3,000 jobs directly because there is no blockchain developer today who has no job. There's, there's no, I, I've seen that, man. I'm like, hey. Why don't we have that? It's, it's just getting it. It's like one that. of the most de- in demand jobs, one of the highest paid jobs in the world. And it will be the same in the next, for the next 10 to 15 years. Why aren't mm. we doing that? We're still teaching people what? Like uh, HTML? HTML, yeah. The PHP yeah. kind of thing. You know, there, yeah. And I've tried to hire some developers from some of the um, these universities, even the new one. It's like, man, most of them are crap. They taught things that are <laughs> old and impractical. It's just a reality, you know? Yeah. It's the ones, the I mean, my, my Malawian developers, they come from that, but they learn on their own. Basically, mm, it's not that the yeah. university got them good because all the CVs that I had from all the other guys who just learned this stuff, computer science, mm. they just couldn't do anything. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. So it's just a reality. If we can transform that, I think that's another way to create jobs. Blockchain developer, everybody. So many young mm. people get jobs. True, man. But I, I th- we have spoken so many fundamental things that yeah. in terms of development, and in terms of making a transformation and all those things. And I believe this podcast is going to help so many people uh, and people check out your universities to learn more. Uh, there are free courses I saw, like the one that you mentioned, the smart contract um, uh, lesson and a bunch of those. So I think people can check it out. Uh, what's, what's, the, what's the URL for that? Is it CryptoUniversity.Africa? Net, net, d- d- network. CryptoUniversity.Network is the website, yeah. Ah, perfect, man. I don't know. Did I leave anything that you wanted nope. to say? Uh, no, it's all good, man. No, okay, no, no. Cool, uh, man. It's all good. I think you have a cool audience, uh, good yeah. episodes, and it's just a, a breath of fresh air to see uh, the Malawian uh, podcast ecosystem growing. And I think you were the leader already. You just took it over. And Apparently, the podcast is, is, is one of those huge ones here. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Straight. <laughs> because I, I, when I came in, I saw a couple of podcasts, right? Uh, I went and checked most of them um, and I saw the conversation. I, I, I found some of the flows. I think it was more to do with uh, accustoming, no, accustoming to the, to the narrative uh, that this is how you have to do it. And oh, yeah. you can't say, say that. And I've yeah. told you that that's, that's, that's radio. That's TV. Yeah. If you're doing yeah. that, if you want to be unique, you need to talk about. Com- you need to have conversations that you need to have with people that would n- not necessarily work because the conversation that we have had here, uh, the language that has been used here, couldn't work on a, on a national TV. So that's what it is. You know, uh, yeah. but you know, I think also your production level is good. You know, you just didn't come yeah. in with some, some crappy phone and some mics that don't work. <laughs> you literally took money and say, look, I'm starting a podcast. It's an investment. Yeah. I'll buy yeah. this, buy that, buy this and get started. Right. Yeah, Not many people uh, do that. Dude, uh, th- that's true because I spent like 4 million, right. To set up my space, uh, for me and Kwaja, right. Yeah. <laughs> to, that, yes. uh, to set up my space, buy these cameras, make sure, uh, there's a producer. So I have a producer and everything is in place. So yeah, I think it, it, it is all about investing. So, which, which is a good thing. Absolutely. Investing is the best way to make money. You know, now you have something that's worth already more than for the 4,000 that you, you spent on it. Yeah. 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 Sure, man. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to, 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 to get a call from you, as I said, and I'm looking forward to having a conversation to how people can learn crypto uh, and Malawi through the platform. I know people ask me questions after this, uh, questions after this podcast to say, okay, how can we start? But I know we, we've, we've talked about people just need to go to the URL and start learning. Uh, but yeah, if for anything, for maybe content and whatever, we'll talk um, yeah, how yeah. you sure. actualize that. Awesome, man. Cool. Thank so you yes, and wishing you all the best, mm-hmm. man. Great, man. Uh, so, guys, this is it. Great diversity for my Malawian audience. This is someone who came from our, our country and is doing great things. I think this is a lot of inspiration for those that are looking forward to break out of this. Uh, until next time, this is Podcast with Mike Yoni. Uh, check the other episodes, like, subscribe, and we'll be glad to have you on the next one. Mm-hmm.